Hello, and welcome back to the Colorado Color Company YouTube channel. Today, Mitch Schallenberger, aka Niche Glass, is going to demo a honeycomb fume marble and pendant for us. Mitch helps us produce this material. He does the fuming and stacking, and then we drop it in the lathe and pull it. Mitch is a good friend, and he's worked in our studio for about a decade now, on and off. And I'm glad he's going to share this technique with you today. So, enjoy! What's up, guys? Uh, Niche Glass here. Right now, I'm just cutting up some of this Millie uh, in nice little chunks. Probably want to get at least a sixteenth of an inch chunk, a nice solid big chunk, because you're really going to want to see uh, a good amount of the image. The best way to cut this, I, I would say, is with a saw and a lap wheel, but in a pinch, a pair of nippers work pretty well. I'm going to put these in the boat that Crest Bug made and put them in the kiln and let them soak for a little bit just to cause any shocking uh, when I put them in the flame. So we let them warm up a little bit and I'm just grabbing me out a chunk with these tungsten tweezers here. I'm using uh, a 10 mil rod for my lens here. Make sure I grab that milli and the right side I want to lens first. And I'm gonna heat up this 10 mil and this is what's going to be our lens for our marble slash pendant. I like to get the lensing material a lot hotter than I, I do the milli, obviously. I'm gonna tip way a while before I even put that milli in the flame. And when I do, it's gonna be on the outside edge of that flame and really just get the surface of it red and hot enough to stick the glass together without distorting that image on the milli, but hot enough for it not to leave a haze between uh, the two connecting pieces of glass. Just wanna try to get it on as uh, straight as I possibly can. Make sure that lens gets sealed to the edge and lip of that milli. Now I'm just going to grab my, this is a piece of onyx here. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to heat up that onyx a lot more than I heat up that milli. That milli is going to barely get heated up in the outside edge of that flame. For the same reason, I don't want to distort that image and I don't want to leave a haze between the two pieces of glass I'm connecting together. I'm just gonna gather up a nice little bit of black, which is gonna be the back of our marble and eventually the back of our pendant. I shouldn't put hot glass down on the bench uh, to prevent injury. A rod rest is uh, ideal. <laughs> so I like to heat and melt my marbles together at, at, with one hand. Uh, using two hands generally kind of, for me, ends up disrupting the image uh, to a small degree and I've had the best of luck doing all of this one-handed. So I'm currently melting the back of that black onto this 10 mil rod clear with a milli on it. Just making sure I get a nice gather here and if I, if I see, it seems like I'm twisting it one way, I try to be conscious and make sure and, and twist it back the other way just so I'm not un, naturally spinning it 
and possibly distorting that image. All that black stuck onto the back of the Millie, covering all the edges of it. I'm just gonna heat up this marble mold uh, to reduce any of this moisture that might be in the mold or dust particles that might be in there that might stick to the glass that I don't wanna have to later pick off. So heating up your mold or your graphite anytime before you put glass on it is generally a good idea. Get a nice gather there. Make sure the back of that's round and I'm gonna to try to make sure that's as even and straight before I start adding on, uh, before I attach the back of it. So here I'm about to uh, attach a punny to the back and, and I think I decided to grab some more of this onyx and attach a little bit to this clear just so I avoid having a little blip of clear on the back of my marble that I'm gonna to have to tear off. If, if you put the same color that you're using as your backing attached to your, to your punty, it's gonna kinda of alleviate any of that issue and having a small blip of clear or whatever color if you use the same color. going to gather up a good bit of this clear to make our lens on this marble. on there and that's that's what's going to create our lens for our image get any of the scuzz left over from our 10 mil off the glass we don't want that in our lens and same thing I'm gonna melt this in one-handed uh, after I've got my gather on there instead of just smushing it all together in my gather I'm just gonna I tore it off and I'm gonna let it gather up with get with gravity I've had the best results just taking my time with it and let, letting gravity do most of the work. out the front of that lens after I got a good gather let gravity do most of the gathering get all those lip graphite marving marks out of it it's about as simple as that as far as getting a nice honeycomb marble made now I'm gonna grab another piece of six mil clear and I'm gonna attach the front of this marble to start forming it into a pendant generally I like to form my marble first on these uh, before I start making it into a pendant um, 
doing it in this process has also yielded the best results uh, for making a honeycomb pendant. I'm trying to skip steps and go straight from a lens to a pendant hasn't always yielded the best results for me. So yeah, I just tore the back, that back punny off and then I'm tearing that excess black off, which is gonna be a lot easier than having an excess amount of clear on there. And I can always melt that small amount of black back into the back and it'll look smooth. So I am melting in that back again and focusing most of my heat on the black that I've added to that pendant, keeping most of my heat on the back half end uh, and I'm going to flatten it. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to run it back out first. Um, and I'm using that s smaller marble mold there and really just to refine the shape of that marble that I want. Go from the, the bigger mold to the, the one that's slightly smaller than the actual marble that I'm working with. And like I said, I'm heating up that back more than I, you know, Focusing my heat on the black. Give your graphite a little heat. And I'm just gonna give this marble a nice flat back. I'm trying to keep it as easy, even and straight as I can. flat back on what is going to be the beginning of our marble here or our pendant and I'm just going to go straight to a piece of onyx and avoid uh, even putting that on a piece of clear I'm going to use the onyx as uh, my ponte on the back of my pendant here for the same reason I, I put black on the, the back of the marble earlier off the front of that marble if you have any excess clear that might disrupt the lens and the image is the image is going to look a little strange it's going to look distorted through the lens if there's a little piece of clear stuck to the end of it that you can pick off Instead of flattening the front of my pendant uh, with the paddle, I like to actually let gravity uh, flatten it and make sure it's round and then I will let heat uh, and gravity make that front of the marble or that front of the pendant flat. I generally like it to do it this way because it retains that nice round concave image that um, I like to see in the front of a pendant. It looks a lot less smashed. And there we have the basis of our pendant. Determine what I want to be the top and bottom of that pendant, and I'm going to punty to the bottom before I start adding my loop. I 
my onyx plenty on a little harder than I, I wanted someone to melt it off rather than tapping it off uh, so I avoid knocking the punny off that I just attached it's not a big deal I'm just going to tear that excess black off the back of it black on there to help you help keep a nice flat back on there melt it back in and make sure that it's flat some more onyx uh, to build a loop out of there's several ways you can make a loop I'm just kind of showing one of uh, the most simple and old-school ways of just attaching a rod and bending it around into a loop or a bale if you will attach it um, a little more toward the front of the pendant and then pull it around to the back these marbles and pen pendants are do not take a very long time to make uh, with the pre-made Millie so it almost takes me as long uh, to make the bale as it does to make the entire pendant. Attachments are melted in, everything's smooth. All the glass looks like one uniform uh, flowing piece of work. You don't want any hard edges. You want to make sure your loop is wide enough for uh, a chain or something to go through. best to make sure it's straight nice little pencil reamer little fine details of the hand torch marks out and then I'm gonna 
to heat this up in the back of the flame since I spent a good amount of time just adding on this bale and not adding heat to the rest of the pendant. I don't want to shock and crack while I before I pop it off. So I'm going to give it a nice heat in the back of the flame and pop that pony off 